third time is the charm. You're not going to see the second one. This is just my battery mojo is lacking today. Okay, but one of the things that I do, one of the things that I do in my inspections is I shoot the floor. Pow, 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 pow. Bad, dead jokes. No extra charge for the boomer humor. But I measure the floor height elevation differential of the floor using a zip level, and uh, that's engineering equipment. And I'm not an engineer, I'm a home inspector. Okay? I'm a measurer, I'm not an engineer. And I'm not doing slope, I'm not doing plots. I'm not measuring every square foot. Just a cursory measurement. And in here in the kitchen, in the laundry, this is the lowest part of the floor, right in here. And you can tell by the cracks that are around this corner. Cracks here, cracks over there on that wall. And again, I'm not doing this to spec or to tolerances. I'm using guidelines. And three of the guidelines that I use is no more than one inch a floor height elevation differential within 10 feet. No more than one inch a floor height elevation differential within 20 feet. And no more than two inches of floor height elevation differential overall. Between here where I'm standing, next to the door that will blow out if there's a fire, it should have a self-closing spring on it. Between that corner and where we're standing here, okay, there's two inches of floor height elevation differential. Excuse me, more than one inch of floor height elevation difference. Almost two, by the way. Maybe two. More than one. More than one. And overall, overall, we're getting about three and a half inches of floor height elevation differential. That in and itself does not say that the foundation is bad. I'm taking clues about the way doors open and close, windows open and close. I'm taking clues about how close trees are to the structure. I'm taking clues about how the, the brick exterior is performing. And I have to say that if I was buying this house, and I'm a home inspector, and if I was buying this house, I'd have a structural engineer look at it. And I just would. So. Okay, well, that was a downer. Uh, we do not have electric receptacle outlet on the east, on the right side of the cooktop. We don't have electric receptacle outlet on the west, on the right side of the kitchen sink. We've, we've been there. We've talked about the appliances. You haven't seen it yet, but we did. Uh, this window is the only window I know that's broken. It's double pane, metal frame, aluminum frame, and the bottom pane is broken. I've opened and closed all these windows, um, all these electric receptacle outlets I've checked. And for the most part, let's see, this one might be the exception. No, it's not. We don't have any grounding in the kitchen. We do not have any GFCI. We do not have any grounding or GFCI in the laundry. This light, I can't work. Maybe somebody can't. Operator error is my middle name. Same stuff as in the other room. I can work the other room. What we got here? We got buttons and dots and wow we got power one two three lights power on power on high high okay so power on high what we got here that turns the lights off oh there we go operator error excellent ha <laughs> Okay, let's try some more. All right, this switch operates the fan. No, it operates the hall. This switch operates the fan, and it's backwards. It's wired backwards. That should be on, and that should be off. And that switch is wired backwards. How about that? At least we got it to work. I don't feel so inadequate now. Moving on along. And this is the hallway. This is the 
furnace, which is too close to the air return. I don't know when the video starts. This thermostat should not be close facing a south exposure like that. The radiant heat from the sun coming through these windows on this thermostat can influence it. So the thermostat will think that the, how the room temperature is warmer than it is. And that would affect your cooling and your heating. You know, you, you don't feel warm, thermostat does, you don't get any heat. You don't, you know, you're freezing, but the thermostat still thinks you need air conditioning. Coming along here. Both bathtub and the shower do not drain properly. They've been draining on the floor. This commode backs up. This in another video. These vents vent directly into the attic. They should vent directly to the exterior. You've got windows, so the vents are not even required. That's kind of nice having bathroom windows. I like that. That's a feature that I enjoy. No grounding, no GFCI. Just saying. I'm coming along here. Remember the video, one of the videos previous to this video, two inside videos, two exterior videos. Wow. But anyway, this is previous subterranean termite damage. Termite's been chewing on that. Bedrooms, lights on, fans on. Aluminum frame, single pane, original to the structure, no grounding, no GFCI. Double pane aluminum frame. These switches are backwards. That's on for the fan. Okay, that's on for the light. Okay, well, I, was, I was getting carried away. I did. This door sticks in this jam. It's not the only one. It's not the only one. Single pane aluminum frame, no grounding. No grounding. Most of the screens are missing. It kind of makes a clicking sound, doesn't it? The doors are working pretty good. This closet light works. You should not have a bare light bulb in a closed closet. Okay. In 1961, when this home was built, that was fine. It used to be A-OK. -okay. Times change. No. One of these doors is giving me some trouble. <laughs> it's going to make me a liar. No grounding. No grounding. Single pane. Again, I'm just kind of taking you on the, the tour. Another video where I, I thank you for your business. I'm sure I got that far. I'm pretty sure. This light doesn't work. It's not even in there. What does that mean? I mean, we just need a light bulb. Well, it's just a light bulb. When you move into an apartment, all the lights work. It's like inside of it. Good luck getting that working. Electric service panel. You're supposed to have 36 inches of clearance. Is that what you're supposed to have? 36 inches of clearance, 6 inches? 17 inches on the sides. You're supposed to have that. That's 70 amp cables come into that. That's really nonplussed. Here's what happens, okay? And I don't think I'm going to mention this in the video that's following us but according to the international residential code this door this door is sticking according to the international residential code i don't do code inspections i'm a home inspector but i rely on some codes according to the international residential code the minimum service coming into a house should be 100 amps 
most municipalities, I'm not sure about this town, but most municipalities, uh, they have more stringent requirements. They require 150 amps. So if they require 150 amps, this door sticks. They require 150 amps, you don't have enough. If they're going with what the International Residential Code says, well, you don't have enough. Not enough power to this house. Just saying. No grounding. Bare light bulb and clothes closet. Windows are fine. Then moving on along. Please remain seated until the boat comes to a complete stop. Keep your hands inside of the boat until the boat comes to a complete stop. Gather up your things. Don't forget your hat. Don't forget your purse. Don't forget your camera. Don't forget your umbrella. Hope you enjoyed the good home inspection, uh, home inspection boat ride. And um, we really appreciated having you. I really appreciated having you along with me. And don't forget to tell your friends and family. Until next time, you know, sign on.